Okay, today we're going to talk about integration rules. In particular, we're going to cover integration by parts. For more information, visit calculuswithoutlimits.com. Now, integration by parts is a technique that you use to integrate the product of two functions. Normally, that's not something we know how to integrate. And a mistake that a lot of people make is they think that the integral of the product of f times g would be the integral of f times the integral of g. But that's not true. And to find out the real formula, what we do is apply the product rule of derivatives. So that's d dx f times g equals d f dx times g plus f dg dx. Now if you integrate both sides of the product rule, on the left you get the integral of d dx f times g and then on the right, you've got the integral of df dx g plus f dg dx. The left side of the integral is just a total derivative. So we just take the integral of d dx f g, and that's just f times g. Now on the other side, we use the fact that integration is linear. That means the integral of f plus g is the integral of f plus the integral of g. So, the integral of df dx times g plus f dg dx would be the integral of df dx g plus the integral of f dg dx. Now this is the origin of the formula presented in a calculus books, which is a little bit mysterious, which would be the integral of u dv is u v minus integral of v du. So let's write the formula in a way that's a little bit more clear and that would be the integral of f times dg dx dx equals fg minus the integral of df dx times g dx. And all that is is the formula derived using the derivative of the product. So integration by parts transfers the derivative from one function in the integrand to the other. The trick is choosing Let's do some examples. We're going to do three examples in the video. The first one, we'll do the simple one, which is the integral of x times e dx dx. Now, you know how to integrate x by itself, which would be x squared over 2. And we also know how to integrate e to the x by itself. You just get the exponential back. But the product, that's not so easy. Okay, so let's write down the integration by parts formula. It's the integral of f dg dx equals fg minus integral of df dx g. So the problem here is picking f and g. We want to pick f so that when we take its derivative, you get a simpler function. So we're going to take f to be x. Because when you take f equal to x, you get df dx equals to 1. Now if we took the exponential to be f, that wouldn't buy us anything since the derivative of the exponential is just the exponential. So you'd end up with the same integrand. and actually it would become more complicated and you could try that. So let's go back to the original integral, x times e to the x. Take f equal to f. So, there's g is the integral of e to the x dx, which of course in this case is just e to the x. So we've taken f equal to x, now we've got df dx equals 1, and g equals e to the x. Now the integration by parts formula, once again, is the integral of f dg dx equals fg minus integral df dx times g. So when we plug everything in, this is what we get. The integral of x e to the x dx equals x e to the x minus the integral e to the x dx. Now we can integrate that second term right away. And we'll add in our constant of integration. Typically, when you're doing integration by parts, you can just wait till the end to put that in. 
And so we get the result, which is uh, x e to the x minus e to the x plus c. And you can pull the e to the x out, and there's your final answer. So here's another example. You see these all the time in calculus courses. The integral of sine of x times e to the x dx. Now, the problem with these kind of functions, or integrals, is that the derivative of the sine, or the integral for that matter, you get a cosine, and so it's kind of cyclic. You have to take the derivative twice, and you get sine back, uh, modulo minus sine. So when we use integration by parts in this case, uh, we're going to have to apply it twice. Now, the exponential is a simple function to integrate, and so we take the integral of e to the x, get e to the x back. And like I said, we're going to ignore the constant of integration until the end. So now we have f of x is sine x. Taking the derivative, you get cosine x. So using the, the uh, definition for integration by parts, integral of f dg dx equals fg minus integral df dx g, we get the integral of sine e to the x is e to the x times sine minus integral of e to the x times cosine. So it seems like we're not getting anywhere, but actually we are, because we're going to apply integration by parts on the second integral on the right. So we take f of x to be cosine x. Now you remember ddf or df dx of cosine will give you minus sine of x. And so once again we take g prime equal e to the x. So g of x is just e to the x again. So the integral of e to the x cosine x dx would be using the integration by parts formula minus e to the x cosine x plus e to the x sine x. And now I've added the constant of integration. Okay, so overall, this is what we had. We have the integral of sine e to the x equals e to the x sine minus the integral of e to the x cosine x. So let's put it all together. So now we've got the integral of sine e to the x on both sides. So you see that on the far left is the original problem. We'll do well, we're going to add the integral on the right to both sides. So now we've got 2 times the integral of sine of x e to the x dx equals e to the x sine x minus e to the x cosine x plus c. So divide by 2, and there's the answer. Integral of sine e to the x equals 1 half e to the x sine x minus cosine x plus the constant of integration. So let's do one more example. This one is the integral of log of x over x cubed. Uh, that looks really complicated, but using integration by parts, it's actually extremely simple. So if we take f to be log of x, which you would do because the derivative is easier or simpler, you get df dx is 1 over x. So whenever you're doing these problems, pick f. So then we have dg dx has to be 1 over x cubed. So integrate that, and you get g of x is minus 1 over 2x squared. So the original integral would be the log x over x cubed is minus log x over 2x squared which is f times g, plus 1 half integral of dx over x cubed. Now we got that, we just took f times dg dx. So f was, or no, I'm sorry, uh, df dx times g. So f was log of x, so df dx was 1 over x. So you get 1 over x cubed, do the integral, and there's your answer. Uh, thanks for watching for this uh, video on integration by parts. Be sure to visit our website, calculuswithoutlimits.com.